Was it a form of karma? Was it divine justice? Was it a simple case of what goes around comes around? Well, I'm not a believer in karma as an actual law of the universe. Things often do come back around, but that's just because stuff happens. Today's story about our friend Jacob, though, seems like a bit of poetic justice. The schemer falls prey to a scheme. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Thursday, October 19th, 2023. When we left Jacob yesterday, he was on his way to Haran to find his mother Rebekah's brother Laban in hopes that he would find a wife from among his own people. Really, Rebekah had just schemed to get him out of town quickly before his brother Esau killed him for stealing his blessing. Having now arrived in the region of Haran, Jacob meets his cousin Rachel, the younger daughter of his uncle Laban. Rachel rushes off to tell her father that his sister's son has come to visit. Laban welcomes him into the household, and Jacob begins working for Laban. Eventually, Laban says to Jacob, Look, just because you're a relative doesn't mean you should work for nothing. And so he asks him what would be a fair bargain. Jacob asks for Rachel's hand in marriage. Laban agrees, setting a period of seven years after which they could marry. Now the drama begins. Jacob completes his seven years of work, then returns to Laban to ask once again for Rachel in marriage. That's where we pick up the story. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go in to her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week with this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave, gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. So apparently scheming and tricking others runs in the family. Jacob tricked his twin brother Esau out of his inheritance. Their mother Rebekah helped Jacob deceive Isaac into giving Jacob Esau's blessing. And now Rebekah's brother Laban has tricked Jacob into marrying both Leah and Rachel. I'm telling you, you can't make this stuff up. If this were written as a modern novel, it would be what's called Southern Gothic. Perhaps not as dark as the writings of Cormac McCarthy or Truman Capote, but on par with Walker Percy or Tennessee Williams. Which begs the question, what in the world does this have to do with God's plan for the blessing of the world through the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? This seems, shall we say, a bit tawdry, cheap, tacky, maybe the stuff of Southern fiction, but not worthy of the lofty stuff of God's way in the world. Well, perhaps the drama is not beside the point. Maybe it is the point. Maybe it's important to see the full drama of human life played out before us with all of its warts. Maybe it's important for us to see that God's way in the world does not depend on the quality of our character. Don't get me wrong, character counts, it is important, but it is also important to see that God is perfectly capable of achieving God's ends even with flawed and tra tragic schemers like Jacob and like us. Think about it. Now, as you think about it, I just want to take a brief moment to celebrate a milestone. By my count, this is the 1,000th daily devotional I've produced since beginning in the early days of COVID. I thought I'd be doing this for a few weeks, maybe a couple of months at the outside. But your kind words, both by email and by text and in person, have sustained me throughout and have con convinced me that this is a worthwhile thing to do. I don't think I'm reaching thousands or even hundreds, but the chance to reflect with you about important matters is important enough. 
and it's important enough, I think, to continue. So thank you for letting me into your home, your car, your office, or wherever it is that you watch or listen. Tomorrow, the schemer gets his revenge. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.